Okay, Renaj, you have host control now. Mm -hmm. um, so down below, if you hit participants on your screen, you then should be able to see a list of panelists, which is all the faces. Yeah, um, I have, I can see eight participants. Does it uh, distinguish between a panelist and an attendee? Uh, actually, no, it's it's saying only eight participants. If I click on it, no, it doesn't. I can I can see it just as a panelist here. Um, oh, if you, you click can. on, yeah, it looks like we have one attendee. Yeah, I can see that. To the panelists. One okay. Attendee. So maybe Lisa should do it then. I can't really. I'm just. Is it, uh, Renaz, did the white column pop up with all the participants? Yeah. And at the top, does it say panelists and attendees? There's like no. two different, like it says participants eight and then right under it, panelists seven, attendees one. Might just be an older version of Zoom. No, when I'm clicking on participants, it's telling me invite or copy link invite. Or... Uh, so that's you're just um, clicking the arrow. So you just get the little yeah. thing. Yeah. Click on the click on the people, like the icon of the people, oh, and then yeah, you get a big yeah. white bar. Oh yeah, now I see them. Thank you. Cool. So I see we no have problem. seven panelists and one uh, attendee. Great. Yeah, I've spent too, too so, many hours on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> so it, if through the course of um, this group's discussion you want to allow an attendee to speak, if you hover over their name, mm. you and there's three dots. You yeah. Can do one of two things: you can yeah. allow them to speak, yeah. or you can promote them to a panelist. I just want to flag if you um, switch someone back from being a panelist to an attendee, just mm -hmm. make sure you say um, change to attendee. If you remove them from the meeting, it's actually mm -hmm. a security function, and they won't be able to get back in. So I just want to make sure you know just switch people between panelists and attendee, but otherwise you'll be totally fine. Okay, so I click on the attendee and then I click on that uh, three dots and then they can talk. Um, yeah, you'll pick um, allow yeah. to speak. Yeah. yeah, so now we have two attendees. Great. Thank you all for your um, understanding that I, I can't stay on, but I... No worries, thank you. So I'll leave and then when the meeting's done, just hit end and this is already recording, so it'll be saved. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Thank you, Casey. Good night. So who's going to sort of facilitate this conversation? I wasn't at the meeting, so I, I can't. <laughs> I don't think we ha had a particular plan, did we? No, not yeah. that I know of. I mean, Renaz ran the meeting and she said we would do the subcommittee. So I don't know, Renaz, do you wanna facilitate? Yeah, I, I can't facilitate it. I just don't have the script. I don't know if I need to read, um, you no, know. You need to do that. All the thing about Governor Baker and all that stuff. No, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, it, it is? Okay, perfect. Yep. So um, you guys all know that we're meeting today to discuss uh, Anna Geraldo Care um, complaint regarding the Sudbury Farm incident that happened last month so um i think and, august oh it's it happened in august and last month she came to the needham human rights committee and she told us about what happened and uh, she would like us to she would like to know what what's our opinion what can we do regarding that incident um Jan, uh, you said you might uh, have some ideas about how to handle it. I don't know, would you like to start or anybody else or Nate? I guess my question, my, well, I, I have two preliminary questions. One would be, 
what really can we do, but also what, um, if we know what Anna's goals were in bringing it to us, like what she would consider to be a good outcome or a satisfying outcome, um, having brought the complaint to us, um, that wasn't necessarily clear to me from the present, from the description of what happened. Um, so I don't know, I'm not sure how we find that out, but it feels like that that piece of it is pretty important where we don't have like a particular set of, you know, we can do X, Y, or Z. Um, I don't know. My, yeah, my understanding is that um, she felt, but I think Anna's here anyway, and if you guys want me to bring her, I can. But uh, my understanding is um, sh she just w uh, felt like um, she, was, she wasn't she was treated fairly um, by Sudbury Farm, even when she reached back to them, and not even an apology was given, regardless of the situation. Yeah. That was my understanding too, that she was um, looking for at least an apology from Sudbury Farms. Um, I don't know why, I think I wrote to all of you, for some reason I kept hearing Roach Brothers. And when she was talking about it, my vision was that she was at Roach Brothers, which not that it makes that much difference, but I have a whole, like I can't visualize it the way I could then. Did, did other people have that misunderstanding or just me? Marley and I did too, and I, I actually took notes, and for whatever reason, I wrote down Roche Brothers. So it, I think at some point, uh, somebody mentioned that there might have been some um, uh, ballot signatures happening at both locations, so maybe that's why I got confused there, but I, I had the same issue. Okay, because when not until you um, sent the police report today, which was very helpful to, to see the, the police report. Um, to, then I could see, yeah. you know, where it was. Yeah. Um, and the police report looked very one-sided to me. Um, yeah, I, I, Marlene, I, 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 don't, I don't know if you felt similarly, but, but my reaction upon reading the police report and then having heard, I think, a slightly different narrative um, from uh, you know, Anna at, at the last meeting uh, was that we might need to spend a little bit more time getting a fuller sense of what various folks' stories were. Um, and maybe not in the context of a you know formal hearing, but um, having the opportunity to either sit down with people or, or have a call or something like that um, to get a fuller sense of, of what actually happened here. Because I mean, obviously by, by design, the police report's pretty short. It's a couple of paragraphs, but um, I agree. I, I thought that the, the narrative conveyed by the police report was different, I think, than the story that we heard in September. Right, and I, I, don't know I if felt I like it similar. was just from the um, assistant manager of the of the, the market, and that um, Anna's voice was not in there at all, um, and I and I don't understand sort of why. So I agree with you, Nate. I think that what we would need to do is get some more information. Um, Um, I I talked with uh, Anna after our meeting, and she was willing to provide more details to all of us. She said she has names, and she didn't want to share specifics um, when she came, but uh, she has everything documented and written. So we can ask her to send us also this email, and we can also reach out to Sudbury Farms and see their version too and so so yeah. I, I would recommend that um, because we can't do this as a group that maybe we suggest one person um, meet with Anna and get more information and then somebody else um, meet with the um, the assistant manager um, at Sudbury Farms um, and um, and hear the two stories um, I don't know if there were any other, I think there were some other witnesses that Anna had mentioned, people who were observing it, and maybe 
we could get those names and then somebody could also talk to those people and then we could regroup. Um, I don't know how that sounds. I know we don't have a formal process in place yet, um, but that's kind of where the process is going. So I don't think there's any reason that we couldn't do it. Um, I feel like if we write an email, that would be better than you can just have everything documented too, instead of just having an informal meeting. I don't know what you think. I think that this is what, what has been kind of the crux of my, my weariness of this process to begin with is that I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't know, does it put us in the position of trying to be essentially fact finders? Because I feel like that that is a really difficult, I think having one-on-one -on -one kind of meetings, I, I think it, it I, I think the, the validity of that fact finding it would be difficult, you know, because I, I, you know, what my perception of what somebody might say might be different than what Marlene's perception of what they might say. And so, you know, I think it's like, then we're kind of making decisions based on what somebody told me, as opposed to me right. hearing exactly from what, what they're saying. Well, I um, think the, yes. the one-on-one -on -one is about, it's not necessarily about the fact finding, but it's about the meeting, right? So I think if a couple, no, you know, fine. the, what do you mean, I, my understanding was that the, all that one-on-one -on -one and the reason why we had to move in the direction that we're moving is because of open meeting law. I don't think just one person has to meet with Anna or just one person has to meet with the, the um, assistant manager. You know, if that's a couple of people, if a couple of people feel comfortable so that we're making sure that we're truly getting all sides of the story and we're, we have a thorough understanding of what happened that I think that's fine. It's the reporting back is, is the, that's where it gets sticky. Is Let me there a goal? Sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Tina. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, is our goal ultimately to, for these people to feel as though they were heard more than anything else? And they were heard in a forum that, in an unbiased forum that was able to I guess we still don't know whatever action or or next course we would take. Um, and so I agree we could do that in in conversation, but if we want to standardize the way we collect that information, I, I guess I'm a little curious if we were to formulate just a series of questions. You know, if we had five questions and we sent it to Anna, the assistant manager, a witness, the police, and even the other party, I'm forgetting their name, but and then we're just able to say you know we assessed all the parties and and then maybe that just gives us that forum for hearing because i don't know what action we can take i mean we're not that, we're that certainly sit right with me um i really need the face-to-face -face based on all the other times i've done this kind of work mm, okay uh, there's a, there's a, i'm totally new to this so. because one well i haven't done it in needham because we haven't been able to but because when you have a one-on-one -on -one and you ask a question, then often there's a follow-up question based on the response that the, the person gives. There's also body language. Um, you know, you look uncomfortable when, when I ask that question. You know, those there are all kinds of things that you have to pay attention to. And if in fact, I, I would, I wanted two people to, to do it, but I thought we weren't allowed to do that. I totally agree with you, Jen. We need more than one person because then afterwards the, the two people can say, this is the way I heard it. So then you bring the information back to the committee mm. um, or the subcommittee, however we end up doing it. Um, can I pose a yes. different, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry, after you. Um, I, I guess to just kind of, throw a different lens on this. Like even if let's say a month from now, we've figured out how to do this, these meetings to, to gather the information and we're meeting back here to, to, I don't know, evaluate and assess the information. Like what is, is our, is our goal to decide whether or not there was mistreatment or not? Or is our goal to try to kind of bring both sides together to maybe, uh, I don't know, 
create some common understanding of what happened and, and some accountability in, in that kind of way? Is, is, there, is, is, is there value? I don't know if this is something that, that Anna may or may not be interested in doing at all, I guess, but um, to me, it would, what feels like a more realistic um, thing for us to offer is a forum to kind of get somebody from Sudbury Farms, whether it's, it, I mean, I would assume the manager would, would be somebody who would be important to have, but then also maybe whoever's a, a, above the manager um, who can speak for Sudbury Farms to be in a room to kind of hear the impact of what happened on Anna so that maybe that that apology, if that's what it is that she was looking for, could, would could possibly materialize out of that kind of conversation, as opposed to us coming at this like, well, we decided that we are crediting this person's statement and this person's statement, but not this person's statement, and therefore we find, you know, that there was, I don't even know what we don't have a we don't have a thing that we're saying happened or didn't happen. It's not like a, you know, something illegal that happened for example. So, so Jennifer, on that thought, I, you know, I similarly have been sort of kicking around what our end product might be or what it might look like, because I think, um, it, you know, it, it, at least as I've been thinking about it, I, I don't know if other people think about it the same way, but uh, the, the story that we heard, I think, raises immediate questions about what happened in this specific context, but then it also raises some more general questions about how we deal with these situations as they come up in the future. Um, if they come up in the future, I mean, maybe this will never happen again, but that seems unlikely. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that, yeah, and the materials that Katie circulated and then um, in the batch shelter case that, that jumps out is that um, for better or for worse, it seems like the SJC's recognized this right under the Massachusetts constitution to, uh, collect ballot signatures, you know, regardless of whether we agree with what's on the ballot, um, you know, they, they, they would have the right to do that. I guess one big question that I had when I was hearing on a story is, um, uh, was there some bias in the mechanism by which Shedbury Farms allowed certain individuals to uh, seek signatures, but not others? Um, so if, it, if they have content neutral restrictions reasonable restrictions on who can collect signatures and things of that nature. You know, it seems like they're allowed to do that. But I, I think w w more generically, what, what I uh, potentially find concerning and where I think we might be able to um, do something uh, it, it is, is to, um, it, you know, if, if we were to find that that Sudbury Farms or this particular assistant manager um, a, a expressed some bias and wasn't content neutral at allowing certain individuals to collect signatures, but not others, that seems like the kind of thing where we can add. <laughs> I, I don't know if we have it within our authority as a committee to write a letter uh, or to, you know, bring something to the, uh, the um, select board or something like that. But um, it, it, it seems like that could be a place where we could add value. We could basically set the ground rules for Needham moving forward um, for folks who are going to provide space or are required by the Constitution to provide space to, you know, allow this uh, uh, activity to, to proceed. I, I just talked for a while. I don't know if people agree, disagree, so no. <laughs> I think your point is well taken. I guess the, the question is, were her rights violated? And I think that's, as a human rights committee, that's what we can look at. Um, yeah, and I think at least there's, uh, well, stepping back for a second, I, I, who does it? Uh, not super familiar with this case law, but I think as, as she described the story, I think there's a credible argument that her constitutional rights, at least under the Massachusetts constitution were violated. Um, and, you know, if that's the case, I think that raises some some concerns. I don't know if that's something that, you know, we're entrusted by the you know, town charter to deal with or if that's, you know, Anna goes and gets a lawyer and sues somebody. Um, but it, at least that was the, you know, my my fear coming out of that, uh, the, the story that we heard. Because I think if, in fact, it seems that her rights were violated, if they were violated, then I think that Sudbury Farms needs to know that and then um, 
how will they act in the future? I mean, so this is this is a case um, that happened, but we were also thinking about this in terms of rights for the for the future as well. And they may not be aware if, in fact, her rights were violated, and we tell them they may not have been be aware. And so it's sort of like an educational piece. Um, um, I'm not sure, but my understanding is she shared with them the information and they disregarded it, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure 100%. Information about what, Renaz? Like, because, um, because Anna shared with us last meeting um, the same uh, document that I think Nate shared with us today about the Massachusetts law, that she has the right to be there without taking their permission. So I think um, I think she shared this with the Sudbury Farms too. So one of the because, things... because yeah sorry. sorry go go ahead sorry because Marlene was saying maybe they are unaware like Sudbury Farms they are unaware maybe they are aware I'm not sure but maybe because she she knows this information Anna because she shared this document with us sorry you go Jennifer. The way that I read that police report was that that everybody was asked to leave at that point, that it wasn't just Anna. Is that right? Yeah. And I think she said that last meeting. Yeah. Uh, that's what I understood. So I guess that that my question is, and, and I, I'm trying to be careful about the way I say this because I don't want to minimize the experience. Mm -hmm that Anna had, but I'm thinking about like what it would mean for her rights to have been violated. I, I don't know. I think it would be hard for us to, to, to um, I mean, it sounds like Sudbury Farms let both of them stay. Things happened while they were both there the police were called and everybody was told that they needed to leave. Mm. And so I don't know if, if the, if the disparate treatment comes from just the way that they were speaking to Anna, is that, is that the crux of what, what we think is different about the way they were treating her as opposed to the other, the other camp that was there? And, and I think this is where fact finding would be super helpful because I, you know, Jennifer, I think if it if it lines up with how it's described in the police report, I agree. I, I mean, <laughs> at some point the police does what the police does. That's why there's the police. But I think if it, as I understood Anna's story, Anna showed up and was almost immediately asked to leave. Um, and I think in that scenario, um, you know, it's a slightly different fact pattern. You've got one person expressing one set of values who's allowed to go and seek uh, signatures for a ballot initiative. And you've got another individual who's sort of interested in public speech on the same issue. Um, and, you know, when they attempt to exercise their rights there, you know, the police is called and everybody's asked to leave. Um, but again, you know, it, it seems like the, that question really comes down to you know, is this a scenario where there are two groups of people out front talking for a while, things got heated and the police was called, in which case I agree, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what we could do in that situation, or is this a situation in which, um, yeah, the, the the reaction by the Sudbury Farms employee uh, was was not content neutral. I guess one one final point I, I, I just add for, for consideration. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Sudbury Farms Rush Brothers General Counsel was aware of their obligations under the you know, Massachusetts Constitution. It may even be that there's some corporate policy that says, you know, hey, if somebody asks, you've got to say yes. But there, there could be daylight between what the sort of corporate organization is willing to accept versus what a you know, particular employee at the, at the store might be um, knowledgeable about or something like that. So one other potential solution I think is that you know Sudbury Farms could um, acknowledge the importance of this and, and agree to sort of provide some education to their employees moving forward. Um, but again, it sort of comes down to what actually happened. Um, and and as you say, you know, police report paints a picture of um, more similar treatment. Um, I have someone uh, attendee uh, wants to speak. Do we allow them? Should we allow them? Sure. Okay, uh, I'm going to give them five minutes. 
Yeah, I only need one minute. My name is Mark Dorfman. I live in Needham. Hi. And I, hi, how are you? Good. I just jumped on this meeting just because I want to get involved with one of the committees. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 unless, is this police report a public document? That's, because it's really hard to understand the context of the meeting without understanding the police report. So I'm wondering if there's a place I can go look at the police report so then I can understand the context of the meeting. Yeah, uh, Mark, do you, do you by chance have a, an email address? I'd be happy to just shoot it over. I do, it. yeah, As a I do. Secondary matter, it is a public record. Um, there's yeah, no, a, no, um, okay. There's a portal, but I can just email it to you right now if you'd like. Yeah, that'd be great. It's M-A-R-K? Yep. At? Okay. C-L-I-C-K-H-M-O dot com. C-L-I-C-K-H-M-O dot com. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I, I'll send it yeah, over that'd be to you great. Right now. Thank you. That's I that's all I really I I think you guys are great. I just wanted to understand the context of everything. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So now Renaj, you have to put him back into an attendee and not panelist. Uh, he is an attendee. Do you see him as a panelist? I see him as an attendee. He's still here. He's still on our screen. One so second. If, he, if he's under attendee, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Good job. No worries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I read the police report and I see Sudbury Farms argument. I see that they they also have kind of a right to say someone was disrupting their customers. And even if they're by law, they can be there, but they cannot also be behaving in a certain way if the customers complain. So that can be really um, Sudbury Farms argument, which kind of sounds like that. And I don't know what we're gonna do when we, when they respond in this way, which 90% they will respond like that. Um, yes, Marlene. Renaz, you said that you thought Anna was on the call, but I think it's only Cynthia and then- the And Cynthia. yeah, no, Mark. she's not. Yeah, okay, sorry, I thought you were. It would be good for us, you know, if she were on for us to ask her some of the questions yeah. that, that we had, but- um, so, I mean, I think we should move forward with just a, some more fact finding. I don't think we can, sure. that's just, you know, that's just my opinion. I don't know what the rest of you think. Cynthia wants to talk. Uh, is it okay if I bring her in? Sure. Okay. Um, I was uh, at the, the, um, uh, the uh, yes on four sign holding today and standing next next to Anna and she said it was her understanding that she was not um, required or invited to come to this particular meeting. Um, I had conversation with her and I said I'm not talking for the Human Rights Committee, but I I think it will be helpful to um, somewhere along the line have another conversation with her where we've said in this process, we wanted to find out uh, what the goals are or what people who are bringing this to us are hoping to have as an outcome. And uh, again, I was not speaking for the committee. I was just listening. I wasn't expressing anything about what was going on or what we should do, just listening. And I think um, that you've picked up on some of it, but some other parts I think are would be helpful too. So, what other parts, Cynthia? Do you are you referring to? Oh, often when we hear an individual complaint, we're looking for what the individual wants. And again, I'm like you were saying that an apology that a person might be looking for an apology. But sometimes events lead to bringing up. Um, the way a town uh, operates in general, or way in this case, the way businesses do. For instance, there is the um, obligation of businesses to allow people to 
collect petitions, again, neutral content um, to collect signatures for petitions. But I don't think that there's anything that says what requirements there are for allowing uh, people to express their opinions who don't agree with the collection of uh, with a particular petitioner's um, work. So that was that's an example of uh, an area that might be explored. Cynthia, that's an interesting distinction. Um, it, it, you're, you're right. My recollection of Batchelder is that the right is sort of explicitly limited to the individual collecting signatures. And I'm not, it's sort of an interesting question as to whether that would extend to folks protesting against the ballot initiative, but not actively collecting signatures. I don't know. I don't know if we have a, like a town lawyer who does this for a living or something, but it'd be an interesting question, but probably go to whether or not there's an issue here from a legal, I mean, obviously there's a moral question, but then you know, from a legal standpoint, but there's a legal question. So what's, I feel like we need to take an action. Um, what's our next step other than, I like, I agree with Marlene, we need really to, um, Someone wants to talk. Uh, I really think we really need to talk with um, Anna and Sudbury Farms, but I feel always I like, you forget things, right? People say something and then you forget it. And that's why I like to have it maybe recorded or if it's not like in an email, just tell me what happened, you know? So I don't know what you feel. And again, just like Cynthia said and Jennifer at the beginning of the meeting, what what's the outcome what what do you want what why are we meeting and what do we want at the end of this do we want do we want Sudbury farm to say an apology to anna do we want just to check facts and to see who is in fault what are we trying to be like a, a police here i don't know really so i think what we have to do is go to, to anna and see what it is she would like what she's looking for. I think that's yeah. the first piece that we need to do. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna bring Cynthia again. Cynthia? Yes? I thought you raised your hand again, so I brought you back. Oh, I was I was trying to. Oh, yes, unfortunately. Um, you know, I I like what you're the direction you're going in, but I think um, Jennifer has raised the same question that I raised about the whole process. That if we in the fact finding, and here's a good example that we might want to talk with you might want to talk with people like at Sudbury Farms and you gain much, you gain different kind of information one-to-one. -one. But if we cannot have a second person without it being a meeting like this, that makes it really hard to do. And for one person, your personal bias is hard to, uh, that you, to count on that, even if you're recording it, you know, or, uh, you know, tape recorder, whatever. It's still uh, that's that's one of the things where, and I know we have two people on the on the group, and we're very grateful for that who have legal experience, but the rest of us don't, and I'm sure they're used to to doing this kind of thing on their own. But doing it for the town, uh, that's the place that I find is. And here's a good example. Suppose I go and talk to Sudbury Farms. And they recognize me as a customer or whatever. You no, know, and somebody else goes, no, you're going to get a different kind of point of view. Or I'm a friend of Anna's, which is sort of one of the reasons I'm not, I didn't volunteer to be in this group because I don't want to uh, compromise that or be biased. So um, it is, I think you all know things would be good to do, but it's, um, it's really hard. 
to figure and you're because we haven't figured out the process totally you're in the middle of it and thank you all for for going forward thank you cynthia and yes jennifer i think cynthia stated a really interesting a, a good point that we should think about um in that our kind of credibility and validity within the community at large i think depends on the community seeing us as a neutral body. And I think that um, we're stuck kind of in a weird place with this right now, because I think um, as a human rights committee that, I don't know, that has a, has a tone of advocacy built into it. So I mm -hmm. think that that's one thing that I think makes this a little bit complicated. The other thing as I was thinking it through is that if I work for Sudbury Farms and I get a call that the Human Rights Committee is trying to meet with me about something, I think I'm saying no thank you because I don't know if there could be a lawsuit coming down the pike and mm. something I'm saying now is going to get used against me um, in that way. So I don't even know Again, like, so we, don't, we don't have any capes on us with superhero powers here. I don't know whether if they if they just say no, you know, what do we do with that kind of reaction? Uh, I don't think it would necessarily be fair to imply that it was like an admission of guilt because they weren't going to participate because the stakes of protecting them, their themselves from legal liability are probably understandable in such a situation, but I don't know. I don't know. Again, I kind of feel like, you know, maybe, maybe the, the better direction or a different direction for us to take aside from trying to be fact finders is to try to be it kind of, I don't, I don't want to call it restorative justice because I don't know that I know enough technically to call it restorative justice, but if maybe our if our goal is to just get these parties together to try to better understand each other a little bit more, that feels doable mm -hmm. as opposed to like coming out with something that says we think Sudbury Farms mm -hmm. discriminated against this Needham right. family. Right. And right. actually as a as a select board committee, I just I'm thinking of all the other things that have like come up where we've been kind of pulled back and saying like we don't have the authority to do that this feels like a big thing mm -hmm. to do on behalf of the town but but i don't think that we're looking fact finding is not pointing a finger it's just getting information and i think if we explained i mean this would the way it would be in any um complaint that we got that we just want to understand and it may be that we do nothing. We're not able to do anything. Um, but it seems to me that we um, should hear more and learn more from both parties. That's um, otherwise, you know, why did she come to us? I mean, I think the first thing is we don't know exactly what she's looking for. Um, you know what her what her goal is and i think that's an important first step but you know maybe jen you don't think so but no i i that's why i started it that way i because i think that that kind of goes back to you know why does this process exist to me because you know i think collecting all the facts to get the more information without having like a, a reason for doing so to me feels like it drags people through a whole lot of, of process and emotion without necessarily any particular goal or thing to do. And I, and I think that the other question that I just wanna raise, I'm not really sure how I feel about it, but is our role to do what Anna wants or is our role to figure out if something happened? Um, uh, another, uh, Mark wants to talk again. Can I bring him? Well, can we just 
finish? Just, sure, sure. This piece right now, just with yeah. this group, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, just echoing what Jennifer just said. I mean, I, I guess one overarching question in my mind is like, what what do we have authority to do? Because I completely agree, it doesn't make sense to you know regurgitate all of these emotions and make folks relive this stuff, even if we can do it in sort of a, um, a, a careful way. Uh, if the net result is this information resides in our heads, but doesn't see the light of day and there's no action items as a result. Um, so I, I, I'm obviously brand new to this. I don't, I don't know where our, uh, where our authority ends or if we have any authority at all, but um, I, I guess, you know, just off the top of my head, uh, you know, some form of report to, uh, you know, select board could be one option a letter might be another option, although that's sort of external facing um, a report put out by the Human Rights Committee that isn't directed at anybody in particular, but is a public record. Uh, I, I'm not advocating for any of these, but these are just ideas that are popping into my head. Or, or none of the above. Is it possible? um to reach out to anna just with an understanding of what her goals are without any further fact finding just as a initial next step and and bring that information back to this group and then we could decide based on whatever her goal is if we do want to proceed with further fact finding my understanding from last time when she said like she reached out to them and she wanted an apology I don't know if anybody okay. else heard that, and and then they didn't. They said like the assistant manager was a new mom, and she was going through some, yeah. Well, I I guess I didn't hear her say that she just wanted an apology. I thought she said they didn't even apologize. I, I, so yeah. I heard it a little differently. Yeah. So I, I don't know how other people heard it. See, that's what it misses the story when someone says it instead of writing it, you know, it, because each one of us, or maybe English is my second language. That's why I didn't understand it well, but yeah. Could we do this via email? The only, like, the like one question, what is your current goal at this stage? And maybe we could get that clarification from her, come back as a group and assess whether further fact finding is worth it. I hear what everyone's saying, right? Like, if her goal is to be heard, then fact-finding itself is worth it. If her goal is for action, but we don't, we aren't clear on what we have authority to action on, maybe we need clarification before we do fact-finding on what, you know, what are the potential option outcomes to decide if we want to do the fact-finding. And to be honest, I think uh, Sudbury Farms um, answer is going to be exactly like the police report. Like there was someone was disrupting the piece of the place or like the customers or something. So they wouldn't, that's, that's because today I read the police report and that's my understanding is the police report. Yeah. Was exactly what Sudbury Farms would say. I, think, I mean, it's certainly a perspective. That's what they certainly could say that. I um, think Lisa's idea is good just to, at least get that information from Anna. I don't know, what do other people think? Sorry, just one more addition, because part of my thought was her just bringing this to a public forum when she came last time um, for both the committee to hear and you know there was a, a large presence from the community, that may in and of itself may have been a big part of her, um, her goal, if you will. Um, but yeah, welcome others' thoughts uh, on on just like a small first step. Do we think that we have the authority to reach out to Sudbury Farms and ask them for a meeting, or do we think that that needs to get thrown up the chain with Town Council and Katie and the Select Board? 
I would, I don't, let's talk to Anna first to see what we need to do or what she wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can go from there. That's the first step, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't see why like, we couldn't request a meeting. It, it seems as, like that's gonna be. As long as the request is, you know, there's a reasonable reason behind it. I can't imagine why. Well, I mean, to play devil's advocate, Sudbury Farms is a pretty big entity here in, in Needham. This kind of allegation certainly does not look good on them. I don't know if there might be. But we're not accusing anybody of anything, right? Like, again, it's we're, we're trying right. to figure out what happened. Okay. It, it, it seems like this is going to come up in the future too, right? I mean, it, you know, if, if I understand our complaint process, our sort of hypothetical complaint process correctly, we're going to need information from folks moving forward. So I think if the if the answer is we don't have authority to go talk to people, then we're going to have to rethink the entire complaint process as There's well. no complaint process. <laughs> There's no process. <laughs> so the answer is no process. Let's move on. <laughs> We'll be better informed, though, but, you know, we do have a training coming up, right? So yeah. we also, as a committee, should be better informed going forward. Is that true? I'm hopeful, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to bring Cynthia back because she, she wants to talk and her hand is up, so. <laughs> I think Cynthia should have been on the committee. Yes. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to keep her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, I really think you're right on for the next step to talk to Anna, but I would suggest you use the word outcome rather than goal. Mm. What, mm. and it's just a little bit of a, of a flip. The other part that people keep bringing up is what are we allowed to do? And I was the loud voice saying, yes, it's lovely to learn about listening and empathy and all of that, but I need to know from the town council what things we can and can't do in the process. And I think this, this would be a good opportunity if you lay out, here's the things that came up in our meeting, directions we thought about going and get from the town council what of those are allowed because you're, we're learning then for how to do it in the future. So that's, um, that part is really important. The other thing I'm remembering, and this was, I, I don't know whether it was brought by Tina, that the person on the select board who had reservations about this group doing the complaint process was concerned about some examples they'd heard, whether it would be unfair to the businesses in town. There was a, like a complaint of the way kids were were of color were treated when they were off, um, after school in a store. Do I remember that correctly? I, that was exactly what I was thinking. Yes, about. yes, that's correct. So here's an example of a business, a business that employs all kinds of people, a business who supports all kinds of activities in our town. And how do, how does the Human Rights Committee approach them? in a way that's respectful and caring, which of course we wanna to do to the individual person who had a very um, upsetting experience that as it's reported, sounds like the kind of thing you don't wanna have happen to anybody in the town. But just to remind people of that aspect of it. Thank you and I will be quiet. <laughs> Well, and that's actually what this first training will be, how you talk to people, how you get the facts. But then there's the other training that we're talking about by, by legal counsel. Um, and I didn't even know that in the subcommittee, we will have public participation. So it's on me. I think when Anna asked me, when are you guys meeting? I said on October 19th, but I don't know if there is a public participation and probably that's why she didn't show up. All of our meetings of public participation. Okay. Mark is also. Uh, all, can I just hand. say that um, Chris, we, Katie and I, are working with Chris to figure out training for us from, from the town council side. Thank you. Thank you. 
Just to note, my family walked in. I'm just going to go off camera for a minute. Okay. And it looks like Mark has his hand up. I don't know if we want to have him speak now or not. I'll bring him. Yeah, sorry. Maybe I'm just ignorant about the committee. But is the committee for education or is it for, um, I hate to use the word policing? It's not for policing. <laughs> no, no, right. But it seems like it seems like education to take this situation and and educate the public on how to appropriately act as opposed to getting one side or the other and determining, I mean, I would assume, and I'm not taking any sides. Like I said, I'm just looking for to be on a committee at some point on one of these. So I just happened to sit on this one. I had a, you know, I had uh, inquired about it a while ago. And they said, just sit in on it. So I'm just wondering, is it, because it seems like by sitting down, by reporting on this, you're actually becoming a um, kind of a, a you know, a, 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 like, I forget your name and I apologize, but, you know, it's almost like it can be an anti-bias. You know, it's like almost like a uh, uh, anti-racist anti-bias type situation. That's all I get to say. Thank you. Mark, I would suggest that you come to one of our regular meetings. This is a subcommittee. You can get a better idea of who we are. We meet monthly. Just a plug for the committee. And it's always this interesting. Um, I wonder if, if and I'm struggling with exactly the right way to phrase this, but if we have our eye on trying to highlight the impact of the actions that happened that day, as opposed to saying that we're trying to determine what happened that day, it's like each, each person there is going to have their own perception of what happened. And maybe we're not in a position to be able to say, this is what happened. You know, this X, Y, Z is exactly what happened. But we do know that, that Anna's perspective was this, this is how, how the Sudbury Farms person's treatment of her landed on her. And, you know, maybe as a, um, as a way of kind of building relationships and community uh, uh, in, a, in a more positive way. I don't know, getting together with that as being kind of the outcome that we're looking for is that everybody feels, no, I guess you can't promise that everybody's gonna feel it, but I don't know. I, I'm still struggling with with how, what, what even if even if we have, uh, accounts of like, this is what we, th like, this is what this person said. This is what this person said. This is what this person said. I don't feel comfortable that we have a place of saying, given all this, we think that this is what happened. And because of that, this is what needs to happen. I don't, I don't feel that we are the right place to do that. Personally. Like we can't make a statement. That's what you mean. Again, I don't know. Like, here. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's necessarily what the outcome would be. I think if we do this kind of listening or fact finding, um, then we will have more information to know how, how or if we want to move forward. Um, and I don't think that we're looking to say this person was right and this person was wrong. Um, or, you know, to me, maybe there was a misunderstanding. I, I don't know. I don't feel like I know enough to even be able to, to say that, which is why I, you know, thought that the fact finding was important that we, um, listen to the parties, um, and just 
we may hear something that says, gee, you know, I didn't know she felt that way, or I didn't know he felt that way. And, um, and then it, it's an opportunity for them to say, well, maybe do you want to talk to each other about it? You know, that, that to me would be ideal. That's kind of what happened, but. I was thinking if we have another meeting and then we can invite both parties, but then Jennifer said, like Sudbury Farms might not, they might feel intimidated by coming here and that might not be a great idea. I mean, I think it may be, I mean, we have, I, I, I might just be projecting, but I, I also think that if we, if we voice it at or introduce it as an opportunity for everybody to come together to talk about what happened, that that's different than we're inviting you to find out what happened on X, Y, the, you know, this date with this particular incident. I feel like the way that you word it could make a difference in somebody's willingness to participate too. Like one of them sounds like an interrogation and one of them sounds like a conversation. I'm actually, I'm not comfortable bringing Sudbury Farms here to one of our meetings. I don't think that feels fair or right to do. Um, fair to who? To them. Oh. Um, I just, it feels like maybe being ganged up, you know, like if there's a subcommittee here with all of us and then um, the complainant and then one other person, it's just, that's just not the way, I don't think that's the best way to handle complaints. Um, even if there ends up being some reconciliation at, at some point, it's not done by committee, it's done person to person. That's that's my feeling about it. I wonder if we, it feels like, um, I think this has been really good dialogue, but it seems like it still all comes back to what is Anna, what is the outcome? And thank you for that language, Cynthia. But what is the outcome that she's most interested in? Um, and I wonder if even with just that little additional piece of information, if we can, that would help this conversation move forward. And if we could at least maybe, you know, take the conversation we've had tonight, table for a minute, go get that missing piece and then reconvene as needed. Um, I feel like we could keep going for a good few hours uh, on potential outcomes here or parties or next steps. And um, I don't know, those are my thoughts. Uh, and again, I'm new here, so, but, and I tend to be pretty action oriented. So I have uh, self-awareness of that too, um, but welcome others, others thoughts. <laughs> So are we allowed to reach out to Sudbury Farms as individuals on the on well, behalf of the Needs and Human Rights Committee? You know, I like think we need to talk to Anna first. Yeah, yeah I, think I think we need to talk to Anna first. I think isn't just the question. I guess I was I was again bringing it back to the only question for Anna at this point is what is the outcome she wants, and we're not going to do any further fact finding with any of the parties until we get clarity on that question from Anna. And I know, Rina, as you brought the perspective that we think she just wants an apology, but let's just get all crystal clear on that and then come back as a group to determine what we want to do next. Cynthia wants to talk. Hey, um, <laughs> so often when people want an apology, and again, I'm trying not to be communicating what you need to do with her, is based on the um, that the other person acknowledging that they have done something wrong or mistreated the person. And so just an apology has a lot of stuff with it. The second thing is I thought part of what the Human Rights Committee was to figure out with each complaint is this uh, legitimately something that might have been a violation of the person's human rights. And if it's not, you may listen to them and all, but it really is not in the area that one uh, says that your work uh, on complaints is part of. 
but I'm not sure that I remember that correctly. No, you're, you're absolutely right, Cynthia. Um, it's, it's something if someone's human rights were violated. In which case, the, one of the focus with, with this situation is what human right is this the human right of being able to express yourself in a public setting kind of thing which i think has been referred to but kind of clarifying that i think is part of of the early process too that's right but then again that very farms might say well she was like uh harassing customers or you know something like that it can be and then that's not a human right when you you know violate other people's right to be there without being harassed or something that's my understanding from the police report so who's gonna reach out to anna I can send her an email asking her about um, the outcome. What would she like? What was like the whole purpose of bringing this up to us? Well, do we have consensus in this subgroup that that's what we want to do? I don't know. I'm in favor of a email um, just asking what is her desired outcome. And then to take action after that. I don't know if anyone else. I, I am agree. also, but I, it's, I, I'm listening to Cynthia and, um, you know, is this a violation is another piece that we need to be thinking about too. So is ultimately our goal to determine if there was a violation of somebody's human rights here? Is that what is that what we're saying the purpose of this is? That's my understanding. I don't think any like there is any harm in listening though and asking her. And then like Sudbury Farms can say, I feel like we also need to reach out to them. Like I just imagine like myself in her myself in her place. What what do I want? I maybe I felt like I am I wasn't respected. Um, I wasn't allowed to be somewhere, although by law I am allowed to be here. I think that's what what she was thinking. That I think she thinks that Sudbury Farm called the police, and for something she was allowed to do. That's why she reached out to us. And it sounds like she thought she was being treated differently than the other group, specifically because of her identity. Is that what you? Oh. That's what I think. But then because the police asked all the parties to leave, then it's not, they can say, well, she wasn't treated unfairly because if they asked only Anna's group to leave and then, but they asked everyone to leave. She also said she wasn't, uh, they didn't let her talk to the police, you know, she wasn't heard. Yeah. So. Well, it might also be interesting to know why the police did not talk to her. So can I just, Tina, I, um, is she here? I can't see everybody. Yeah, hi, Tina. So if I send an email to um, Anna and ask her about 
what is her desired outcome from this and if she can provide more details. Uh, can I share the email with you, with all, all, all of you? Is that fine? No? We, we, have, we could talk, we, you could do it, but we would have to talk about it in a, if we wanted to have a conversation about it, we'd have to meet again as a subcommittee. Okay. Yeah, you can share it, but we can't discuss we can't it. We have, have to have a public dialogue. meeting we'll to discuss it. That's it. Okay. So you could reach out to her. We could schedule another meeting um, so that we know that we have a time to talk about it. What am I hearing now? There's two questions we maybe want to, I don't know if it's her to, I don't know if she's the one to answer, but is it, what is your desired outcome? And are you, is it upon her to answer the question? Do you feel as though your human rights were violated? Is that a question you ask the person or are we saying that's for us to determine? And if those are two just questions we could ask her, Again, I don't think I reversed my earlier thought, Marlene, of going into more questioning or interviewing or fact finding via email. I, I agree that if we go in that direction to do it in person makes sense. But just in terms of, of these two pieces, you know, what is your desired outcome? Are you suggesting that? Do you feel as though your human rights were violated? Yeah, you were discriminated against, or you were discriminated. Thank you, or you or, know, or and the, then the human rights were violated. Yeah, right. And if we get just clear answers to those two questions, again, does that help us figure out how to proceed from there? I think it would help, Jen. You're not sure. <laughs> I, I'm getting to knotted up in my brain because I feel like discrimination is, is such a very specific thing in the law and like violation of human rights is a pretty, it, it's like a vague umbrella term that has a lot of Wrong. emotion Wrong. into it, but there's not like, uh, you know, a human right that we could say you, you violated this human right I don't know it's like it's 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 very to me it's it's really a very um difficult needle to thread because I I get the sentiment and I and I my heart is there my brain is just having trouble figuring out like what is the impact of this and and you know again if what we want is to be viewed by the community as as a, a safe, neutral body for anybody to come and talk to. I think that if we if we make a decision that what we are is an advocacy group for people coming to us, I think that that is that could potentially um, backfire on us. I think if if people think that we are, you know, that they already know the outcome if they're coming to us because we're we're human rights warriors, you know, I don't know. I, I'm having, I'm having trouble with this, honestly, but I know that that's nothing new that I'm expressing to you guys. So I'm going to try to be quiet now. <laughs> Jen, I'm curious, cause you bring such a good question and I'm sorry, I don't really know everyone's backgrounds, but I'm imagining you come with a legal background. Would I be right? That is correct. <laughs> okay. Um, I, so, I, yeah, sorry. Um, no, what were your thoughts? I was, I was just going to say, I, I work at Rosie's place and I hear all day long about people's rights being violated. And like, there's no question that when they're saying it, like something has been violated, but proving that they've been discriminated against is a very, mm -hmm. it's a very narrow yeah. path. Yes. And to, to the extent that this has any bearing outside of Needham or to the reputation of Sudbury Farms or to the town, uh, I don't know. I just feel like that. Yeah, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, no, I feel your heart, and um, I respect your legal perspective because I'm not a lawyer. Um, but I'm curious from the lawyers if there's any concern with asking these two questions at this time. 
even if we don't know how we would proceed and we don't know how we would, you know, if this does become a legal matter, how do you just determine whether or not it's discrimination versus what what type of human right violation or description, whatever. I think you're asking all the right questions from my non-legal perspective. Um, but in terms of immediate next steps, do we think asking these questions or what are the questions we need to ask of Anna? Because I don't even know if these are the right ones, they're just the two I picked. But what are the questions that would help us determine our next actions? Because I think so much of this conversation is about what do we wanna do? And I just, I just think we're not there yet from what I can determine. And so what I'm trying to shine a light on is like, what do we do with the unknown feeling we all have and the, the, you know, the contemplation worrying in all of our brains because there is heart attached to all of it. Um, what helps us take at least a baby step forward? Um, so I guess my question would be, are those the right two questions or does anyone else have other suggestions of what could be that at least helps us say, what are we working with here? Cause even though she did speak to us, it feels as though there's some, um, just some some pieces missing. I don't have a better word for it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that helps your discomfort or brings us any closer to a next step. And I think your perspectives are so important. I think we're tra trying to do this without a, an existing process is really challenging because I feel like trying to set realistic expectations for everybody and guardrails for what the, the, the possibilities are, I think are tough. And I, again, mm -hmm. I'm just speaking from my experience. Sometimes it, you know, if, if expectations don't closely resemble reality, it can lead to kind of mm -hmm. people feeling more um, victimized. Uh -huh. You know, and so I, that's, I love, it's that's so what I important want to happen. Yeah, I think expectations is such a good word that hasn't been brought up yet, at least in this meeting. I think you're totally right. So I'm curious, what would it look like, since we theoretically, and I know this has been going on long before I, mm -hmm. I joined, but since we are theoretically trying to take action on creating a formal process, could it be appropriate to say to Anna at this point? that you know we have uh an upcoming meeting where we're hoping to have an outcome to establish some process you know we'll get back to you in x amount of time and i realize that unfortunately we may not be any closer than where we are now i don't know is that just kicking i think that's a really good road? a good a good point lisa because i feel like if we're just transparent to Anna about we don't really know the scope of what the possibilities are but that we are trying to get the information that we need to do that um, you know maybe that helps her to understand where where we are sitting um as an organization. we hear her right? right I think that's a big part of yeah. it like you've been heard yeah our hands are tied here's what we're doing right now you know, we have some training or do whatever the steps are laid out. Um, I'm still not clear on next steps there, but as much as we can share and say, we commit to get back to you in the next 30, 60, 90 days. And we hope we have more information then. And I realize that might feel, and we can empathize and say, we realize that that isn't ideal, but that's <laughs> reality, right? Like it sucks for this to be drawn out. I she, We should have been able to take immediate yeah, we should have had those expectations, but we don't. You brought up a good point. Can anyone speak to what are the next steps? And I know this has long preceded me um, in oh, terms so of the putting a process. has, has yeah. to approve our, we have to make sure that what we have is ready to go to the select board. They have to approve that we are allowed to uh, have a discrimination complaint process. Um, they have not, we haven't gotten there yet. 
Have we brought it before them yet and been denied or we just haven't brought it? We haven't brought it. It wasn't ready. Wasn't ready. Do we know, are there certain times where we can bring it to them, them like quarterly or certain milestones that we can aim for? We can say our goal is to bring it by X date for approval. Well, I think Tina could can answer that, right? Anytime that they meet, we can get on their calendar. Got it. We're not ready because of this is, I mean, these conversations we keep having. I mean, I think at one point we were just going to pull the plug on it all together. Mm -hmm. So if we're not confident, I, I will not take it to anybody. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not going to present yeah. anything unless we are confident that we have this thing nailed down. Well, we do have some. Thinking, mm. Sorry, what? What are, what are you thinking about about the whole kitten goodle? I think we need it, but I don't. You know, the, everybody has sort of, everybody I think is sort of in the same place that they've been in with their concerns and reservations or. Um, enthusiasm to move forward. Um, I guess my question is, if we don't do it, then who does? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, I, I had an incident happen to me with my children. I had nowhere to go. I, I came home to my husband. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. I would personally would like this to move forward, but I, I'm not, there are 12 of us. So we, there has to be some sort of, you know, Marlene and I are sort of moving forward as, this, as if we're trying to put all of the pieces in place to make it um, work as well as it can in the beginning stages and fully understanding. And I think everybody needs to understand that that's, this is, it's like a, a living, breathing process. It's not set in stone. It's going to, constantly evolve depending on the situations, the individuals involved, the outcomes, you know, um, and uh, advice from town council. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we're dragging our feet on it. It's just, I, I feel like we're not, we're not in enough of a place of consensus to present I, I, I hope i didn't um, uh imply that i thought anyone was dragging their feet that certainly was no 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 not knowledge. at all okay I just <laughs> i i know i had a sensitive subject so i just want to be clear that i'm so supportive it is what it is yeah Cynthia. thank you for I'm, all I'm, you've done I, i'm with yeah. you i i think that you and marlene have done an incredible job of staying with the process and before um who's now resigned because she had her third baby was working with you too um jennifer or somebody mentioned the word expectations and so i think if we're going to be asking um anna what her hoped outcome hope for outcomes are that we you have to have some sense of what you can say to her about what she as a person bringing a complaint can expect that this group would be able to do or not do. I mean, you could say, you know, we're not going to be making a ruling that will say that a that a business has discriminated or something. You know, to it's almost like you have to have be at least part way there of saying at least carve out some area that is possible for the, this, for the Human Rights Committee to take an action. Otherwise, it doesn't make much sense to ask her about her hope for outcome. If her hope for outcome is that we're gonna say they discriminated against you or, or that they mistreated you and that therefore you're owed an apology or um, I'm not sure, you know, but somehow, to have some sense of expectations that 
that she and other people bringing complaints can have. And it may be only carving out, as I said, part of the territory. Okay, so why don't I talk to Chris, he, who is town council, because I think that is another piece of what we're struggling with right now, because we don't want to overpromise. We don't want to um, offer anything that is not something that we are capable of. I think that's a great idea, Tina. So let me talk to Chris and see what he says. I explain what's been going on. He can watch the video. <laughs> and then he can at least guide us and to say this is you can do this, but you can't do that. And he Chris um, will prepare a song. He's I still think it would be good at least to let Anna know that we are in conversation. Um and you know that we heard her and that we are trying to figure out um what our next steps could or couldn't be. I just think based on what her outcome is yeah i just think it's a courtesy to let her know yeah. i mean mm -hmm. she came last month um you know it's been a month and we haven't done anything or gotten back to her i just think it's a courtesy to get back to her yeah should we set a time frame and just say we will get back to her with an update even with no resolution but just so we're sort of um yeah i mean that's i think that's a nice aligned. nice thing to do to say that we're <laughs> we're kind we're stuck right now. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, I'm kidding. That I wouldn't say. Thank that, you for but... coming to us. We are completely <laughs> useless to you. Yeah, we appreciate your time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think um, you can still ask for her. We're outcome. totally going to help you out here. Yeah. <laughs> you can still ask yeah. for her outcome. We're not. Uh, no, not until you hear from Chris. No. Yeah. So I'll, let me talk to Chris and maybe. Um, who who has initially been involved with who was initially involved with Anna? I mean she came to the meeting last last time and I was co chairing the meeting because you weren't there. And when she talked about it, I was thinking to have a subcommittee, but it, I wasn't thinking to be pushed to this month, like maybe in a week or two. And I didn't know also the subcommittee will be public. And so we can discuss our next step. So, so nice. yeah. yeah. Okay. So do, could you email Anna and just let her know we she's she can watch this. This is going to be yeah. That, I'm going to share it. Yeah, I'm going to her shortly. It. Yeah. Um, could you please just email her and tell her that we were talking about this, and we don't want her to think that um, her time sure. has been wasted or that her experience yeah. is not valued by us. We're we're trying to yeah. figure out how best we can um move forward yes. move forward yeah, in the meantime yeah. i will talk to chris and then we can figure out next steps over the next couple of weeks sure or, i'm getting yeah i'll tc you in the email too or okay. if or if there are i mean we may have to wait right. until, until we have a process in place but um, right and just let her know we'll update her as when we know I wouldn't say 30 days, 60 days. Yeah. When we know, because we don't know when we'll know. <laughs> but I think we'll have how, more clarity after I talk to Chris. Yeah. And who knows how quickly you can get to Chris. So that's, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to acknowledge how much I've learned tonight and, and thank you. <laughs> Mesa, thank you. we're all learning every day. <laughs> Every day, <laughs> every dang day. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you, tomorrow. thank you all. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. Bye, bye. Good night. I need to figure out how to stop the recording. Oh yeah, I found it. Bye.